Hi everyone, my name is Ray Molnar and I'm one of the senior trainers here at Mystic Aquarium. We had a few technical difficulties with our internet connection during our Facebook Live, so we're going to give another try at this. I'm at our Pacific Northwest habitat with our four stellar sea lions, and we're going to be focusing on our youngest stellar sea lion, Pearl, who is going to be four years old. She's right here on our center island. Now, Pearl came to us in December of 2018 from the Alaska Sea Life Center in Seward, Alaska. And that's the only other facility in the United States that you can go to to see a stellar sea lion. So when you come here to Mystic Aquarium, you're very fortunate to see these animals. They are the largest of the sea lion species. Female stellar sea lions, when they're fully grown, are usually between 500 to 600 pounds. Pearl is only about halfway there. At almost four years old, she weighs in at about 330 pounds, so she's still growing. Now you just see her mother popping up on the other island, and that is Eden. Eden is about 19 years old, so she too also came to us from the Alaska Sea Life Center. Eden is fully grown. Now I'd say this is Pearl, and she was named at the Alaska Sea Life Center named after Pearl Island in Alaska. So it's P-E-R-L. Now we also have Pearl's aunt, Sitka, in the back of the habitat. You can kind of see her backing up over there. And then our other stellar sea lion is Astra, who's also in the back of the habitat. And he is our male stellar sea lion. Stellar sea lions are found in the North Pacific Ocean, ranging off the coast of Northern California up to Alaska then over to Russia and down to Japan, so still pretty far away from us here in Mystic, Connecticut. The furthest south that they have been found is San Francisco, but it is rare to see them that far south. Now, I didn't mention how Pearl is Eden's daughter. Mother sea lions and their pups can recognize each other in groups of hundreds or thousands of sea lions just by recognizing their own unique vocalizations. So I'm gonna see if Pearl can get back up on that island for all of you and share with you her vocalization. And this vocalization has definitely helped earn them their names of sea lions. Good. So that vocalization is unique to Pearl. And we're going to have our other sea lions share with you their vocalizations as well. So you can hear some different sounds from all four of our stellar sea lions. So again, that was Pearl. Let's see if we can have Eden hop up on that island and share with you her vocalization. So there's Eden's. Let's see if Sika can share hers. Then last but not least, we'll have Astro. Now here at Mystic Aquarium, I'm sure you've been noticing so far during our session that we've been feeding the sea lions a lot of food. And we're currently feeding them primarily four different types of sea, uh, good quality seafood. It's all sustainably harvested seafood. And they're getting herring, capelin, squid, anchovies, and sometimes we even give them chunks of salmon, which I have right here in my bucket for pearl. And you'll be noticing as they're catching their fish, they are swallowing down whole even though they have a mouthful of sharp teeth. Good. And sea lions have about 34 to 38 teeth in their mouth, and those teeth are just used for grasping onto their food, killing it, and they also use it for self-defense. Now, we do train all of our animals here at Mystic Aquarium using what's called positive reinforcement. So throughout this session, you may hear myself, as well as the other trainers, say the word good to the animals. And this is how we let them know they did exactly what they were asked to do, and they're going to get their reward of fish. If they do an incorrect behavior, we simply ignore that and take a short pause. And then we may ask them to do the same behavior a second time, or we move on with our training session, which is how we keep them positive. We also train our stellar sea lions in what is known as protected contact. So that means there's a barrier between us and them. This is for our safety. But these barriers are also beneficial to the animals because they know that they are there. So if they don't want to participate in their voluntary training sessions, they know they can simply swim around. Island. Good. 
And we also train a lot of different types of behaviors. And the most important thing we can train these animals for is their own health care. And these are called husbandry behaviors. We want to make sure our animals are very healthy every day that we're here. So we train them to show us every square inch of their bodies, such as their big front flippers. And sea lions will use those big front flippers to help them with their swimming. Good. But you also may notice that while Pearl's on the center island, she can support her weight on all four of those flippers. This is a characteristic of a sea lion. They have a rotating hip bone so they can support their weight on all four flippers. And this makes them pretty agile on land. Good. And it definitely helps them to climb around on the rocky coastlines where they're found. The entire population of stellar sea lions on the west coast has been divided into two separate subpopulations. There's the eastern population of stellar sea lions, and they're the ones that are concentrated primarily off the United States, from northern California up to southeastern Alaska. And then there's the western population of stellar sea lions, and they're concentrated off of southern Alaska over to Russia and down to Japan. In October of 2013, the eastern population of stellar sea lions was taken off the endangered species list. Good. And that's great for them. The western population still remains on that list. And one of the challenges that stellar sea lions, along with other marine mammals, face out in the oceans is finding enough quality fish to eat. Good. And this is due to overfishing of their main food sources. So something you guys can do to help out stellar sea lions and marine mammals, especially if you're a seafood fan, try to choose sustainable seafood. And that is either farmed or sustainably harvested, meaning not too much is taken out of the oceans. They leave some behind for marine mammals. Now, if you're not sure what sustainable seafood is, believe it or not, there's an app you can download. It's called Seafood Watch. It's put out by Monterey Bay Aquarium. And this will help you choose sustainable seafood, which is very important. That's why we like to feed all of our animals here at Mystic Aquarium. Now I'm going to talk a little bit more about some husbandry behaviors before we wrap up our training session. Again, we want to make sure these animals are healthy, and we couldn't make sure they're healthy without the help and support of people just like you that either come through our doors or support us during this time through donations. So I'm going to have Pearl back up a little bit. Looks like she wants to go over to the other island, which is completely fine. So earlier Pearl showed us all of her teeth. Good island. And the underside of her flippers. But now I want to see if Pearl will lay down and roll over and show me her belly. Good. So she did a great job with that. And that's another example of a husbandry behavior. It's not the only thing we train them for. We want to make sure we keep our animals mentally and physically stimulated. So we will train them other types of behaviors that we like to call enrichment behaviors. So we'll have Pearl and our other sea lions wrap up the session showing you some of these enrichment behaviors and then we'll give them what we like to call our end of session signal. So we're going to start off so Pearl can spin around in a circle. Good. So as you can see, our stellar sea lions do have a lot of energy. We'd like to thank you for tuning in and watching our stellar sea lion session. And we'd also like to thank you for your continued support of Mystic Aquarium. Thanks for visiting us here today, everyone. Have a great day, and we hope to see you here soon. Bye-bye.